When you input notes into the piano roll editor using the pencil tool, they are always created at exactly the same duration and velocity as the last note selected in the piano roll editor itself. So here I've got an eighth note selected and it's yellow velocity. When I create a new note, it's also an eighth note with a yellow velocity. And that's a little bit of a lower velocity. If I select a 16th note at a high velocity, the red, and then create another note, I get another 16th note at a high red velocity. All right, I'll press escape, escape to get my arrow tool and just rubber band select these notes I don't want and delete them. Let me show you an easier way to find the notes you want to input. It's called step recording. To enable step recording, I'll click the in button at the top of my piano roll editor. And now whenever I click a key on the keyboard attached to my system, I'm going to end up inputting some notes. Check it out, I'll press a key. In this case, I'm going to press the C2 key right here. So watch what happens. I've input a C2 note. I've input a C2 note and it's, I've input a C2 note. If I press really hard, I get a higher velocity. If I press really soft, I get a lower velocity. The duration of the notes you input is actually determined by a special window in Logic. It's called the Step Input Keyboard. So if I open up this keyboard, I've actually got 16th notes selected. If I go ahead and select quarter notes and then press a key on my keyboard, I get a quarter note. So that's a little gotcha you need to keep in mind. You can also play chords. If I press more than one key, notice I get a chord. Okay, let's erase all of these notes and put my playhead back to the beginning of the cycle range. Let's press zero to do that. And that's an important fact because when you create new notes by step input recording, the notes are always created at the playhead's current position. But moving on, I happen to know how this hi-hat shuffle works. It's a series of alternating open and closed hi-hats and I found them on my keyboard. So I'm gonna start inputting them now. There's 16 notes and the first one is the F sharp two. So I'll press that on my MIDI controller keyboard. Second one is D sharp two, so I'll press that. That's perfect. So I can go through now and really quickly make up this hi-hat line just by pressing these alternate keys on my keyboard. And we've got some different velocities in there, so it might even make it sound like it's a little bit more natural. Let's see what it sounds like. Now ah, we're getting pretty close. If we compare that to our original here, and I'll mute the uh, synthesized drum line. And here's the original. So I'm gonna have to work on the tuning of the alter beat there a little bit, but I'm getting pretty close to having synthesized our original drum loop. Now you might ask, why would I wanna go ahead and do this? Well, you never know. I might wanna do a strange little thing like increase the sampling rate of this song, or you know, go through and work with the timing of the kick drums. If I have a MIDI loop, I can easily do that at a later point in time. If I have an audio loop, that's not such an easy thing to do. And the final thing I'll mention on this topic is that sounds that are first generation sounds or sounds that you produce with instruments always sound better than loops. These loops are kind of flat 44.1 kilohertz loops. So if you can resynthesize the sound using a synthesizer, do it. It'll make your song sparkle much more than using a recorded loop.